Hello children, how are you? Hope uh, all of you are fine and once again happy Diwali to all of you and this is our first class in English after Diwali vacation. So welcome back in class 12 English and today we are going to de uh, deal with our new chapter that is that has been taken from the book of Snapshot. Okay, uh, sorry not from Snapshot, it is from Vistas. Okay, so we are doing uh, last chapter, chapter number 7 from Vistas. Uh, that is our supplementary reader in our previous classes. I already completed you the book called as Flamingo, which is our main reader and all the chapters in that we have completed from final examination point of view. Now, uh, this is our last chapter in Vistas as there is one more chapter memory of childhood does that has been deleted for this session okay so Ivan's trials and all level is our chapter number seven in class 12 English by Colin Dexter and this will be our part one okay in today's video we will be dealing the part one of this chapter and this particular chapter is all about a person who is a prisoner called as Iwan. Okay, my dear children, the theme of the chapter is all about the cleverness which this uh, prisoner Iwan has uh, in himself and he is rather a kleptomanic. He has a strong urge to steal. Okay, so Iwan is our protagonist of the story he is a hero of the story so it all deals with the smartness and cleverness plan he makes to get escape from the prison but along with Ivan there are a lot of characters in this drama or other in the story and this story particularly has been written by the British crime writer called as Colin Dexter and he, will, he has received a lot of awards in his field of literature. So we will start with the character. The main character is James Ivan. He is the prisoner. And then we have another lot many more list. The secretary of examination board. Okay. Means this chapter deals with how the starting of the chapter will be Ivan is in the prison and he wants to give a O level examination of German language. Okay, that is all about. So the secretary of the examination board, the governor of the HM prison. In this HM prison, our Ivan is there. He's in the inside the prison means again he has been charged with somewhere uh, on some points of stealing that's why he is in the prison so the governor of HM prison of Oxford Mr. Jackson is a prison officer Mr. Stephen is again a second prison officer he is a newly deputed one then we have Reverend S. McClary who is an invigilator and the Carter Detective Superintendent and M. Bell who is a Detective Chief Inspector. Uh, I will tell you one by one as the story starts with that Ivan is in the prison and Ivan is actually, it has been seen that Ivan was taking tuition or other classes of a language of German language and now we want to give examination for that uh, particular language for whom he was provided all the tuition classes or other coaching classes by the jail authorities because in whatever jail in wherever jail you are if the prisoner may demand uh, can demand or if he demands for education no jail authorities declines so here also Ivan who is in in the prison demands for a coaching class which seems that it has been fulfilled and now he wants he urges the jail authority to arrange an examination so that he can qualify that O level examination and get a certificate okay so the governor of HM prison who is the head of that prison in which prison Ivan has been kept 
had a have a conversation with secretary he actually the chapter starts with uh, secretary and governor conversation they two are having a conversation and the governor is trying to make secretary understand there is only one candidate and for that can you arrange an examination and yes secretary says why not and in that course while the examination will be organized for event due precautions will be taken by the governor as they never believe on ivan why because already uh, ivan name is called as ivan the jailbreaker already two or three times he have escaped from jail so all the jail authorities are having a concept or having a concept uh, thinking in their mind that this can be another plan of ivan to escape the jail so they were all be taking very great precautions and in that the governor appoints jackson and stephen that they will look after the entire process when ivan will be giving the examination in jail okay then here comes again mr reverend s mcclary mr reverend s mcclary is the person who comes or rather is appointed by the secretary or on the examination board as an invigilator to come in the jail or rather to come in hm prison of oxford and take uh, the examination from or rather conduct the examination from james ivan so invigilator will be reverend s mcclary and this i am not going to tell you uh, i will be just telling you why these two characters are there no why these two characters are there but they are the characters because it is a suspense thriller type of story so it will create a lot of suspense and thriller so there is mr carter Dep uh, deputy superintendent and mr m bell who is a deputy or sorry detective superintendent and he is a detective chief inspector so now take uh, all of you take out your books along with me and we will read the chapter and get so we will go very slowly otherwise you will lose the charm of this chapter so i hope you get a slight inside view that the chapter will start with the communication of the secretary of examination board and governor of the jail they were having a talk about ivan that ivan want to give an examination and can the examination be arranged so we will start our uh, reading from page number 70 from the first okay and before we read there is written all precautions have been taken to see to it that the o level german examination arranged in the prison for ivans does not provide him any means of escape okay so while pre pre preparing for the examination or arranging the examination the all the jail authorities were having this concept that it can be another plan of ivans to escape from the jail so they have taken the due precautionary, uh, precautionary measures it was in early march when the secretary of the examination board received the call from oxford prison oh my goodness when it re received the call so they received the call in the month of march who the secretary of the examination board received a call about something new and it has been written that they received the call in the month of march and who is calling the secretary of examination board okay from oxford prison definitely the governor has called it's a slightly unusual request governor but i don't see why I shouldn't try to help these words are said by the secretary of the examination board uh, yes your request is like something just one person is there to give the examination okay even though your uh, it sound it is sounding strange but we can arrange but i don't see why we shouldn't try to help just the one fellow you say that's a chap call ivans started night classes in o level german last september says he's dead keen to get some sort of academic qualification 
So our governor called whom? The Secretary of Examination Board and Secretary said, okay, we can, we are ready to help you. Although it's sounding very weird that only one fellow and then our governor is replying, yes, he's only one fellow and he started what? He started night classes in German language when he started in September month last year okay last year so night classes were organized by for Ivan since last September and now it is month of March so Ivan has told the jail authorities now he has learned from September to March so he want to write examination and get a certificate for the say so what happened is he any good means the governor sorry the chief of the examination or rather the secretary of examination board is a good student is he good student he was the only one in the class so you can say he has he had the individual tuitions all the time really he, he would have cost him a packet uh, if he had been outside so governor is replying see what's the matter of good or bad because he is the only one in the class and he has been taking all those tuitions rather we are paying our jail authorities and that is all uh, on the jail authorities that expenses if he had been outside then that expenses he would have beard then he would have known okay so we say that well let's give him a chance shall we so secretary is telling okay governor on your request we can give him a chance this jolly kind of you what exactly the procedure now so who is asking yes sec uh, the governor of the prison asking okay tell me the procedure if you are ready to conduct the exam oh don't worry about that i will be sending you all the forms and stuff what his name he wants what is name uh, what is name you say he wants so this line has been st uh, told by the yes by the secretary of examination board okay okay he's telling to the governor rather he's assuring need not to worry the head of the prison oh mr governor i'm there i will be selling the i will be sending the question paper i will be sending the form everything so your people need not to worry so a uh, last time who is asking the name the secretary of the examination board and then the reply is coming from this uh, james roderick ivan it sounded rather grand just one thing, Governor. He's not a violent sort of fellow, is he? I don't know. Want, uh, I don't want to know his criminal record or nothing, nothing like that. Anything like that. Okay. In spite, who has given the commitment? The Secretary of the Examination Board has given a commitment to the Governor of the Jail. Okay, it doesn't matter. We will organize the examination for one fellow. But he was having something in his mind. So he's asking to the governor of the prison. He's like a violent means uh, in the during the course of examination. Would he would like to take something or oh and he will try to escape? Uh, I'm not asking something that he is criminal record. I don't want. But is he okay personality? Governor is replying. This line has been spoken by governor. No, if you have the pen and pay, uh, pencil, you can write now. No, there's no record of violence. Quite a pleasant sort of chap. They tell me a bit of a card, really, one of the stars of the Christmas concert. Oh my God, what the governor is giving? Governor is giving a good report to the secretary. No, 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 no violence type of. He's a very good, genuine or type of, uh, you know, if he had been outside, he could be a, like a star performing in a concert, Christmas concert. Imitations, you know, sort of thing like Mike Yafwood stuff means like a celebrity. No, he's just a congenital kleptomanic. Oh my God, this word congenital kleptomanic is used for those person who have an impulsive control disorder. Means they cannot control their stimulus. If they feel, they feel that, oh my God, I want to steal means I want to steal. There is no reason behind that strong urging stimulus of stealing. So that is called as kleptomanic personalities. The person who have a strong urge to steal without any reason. So Ivan was that kind of prisoner who was having a strong desire to steal without any reason, just for fun. Okay, so 
the governor was tempted to add something else, but he thought better of it. He would look after that particular side of things himself. So he was giving this introduction or he was telling about Ivan to this secretary and he thought that he should stop here only. But presumably, said the secretary, you can arrange a room where? So he was supposing that where, where we can organize in the jail, are you going to give us room, uh, Mr. Governor? No problem, he is in a cell of his own. If you have no objections, he can set the exam in there. That's why. So governor uh, the, uh, of the prison is telling to secretary, no problem, there is no room required. He can give in his cell. Just room me lock up. Eh? Usi cell me wo examination de sakta hai. There is no problem. And if you don't have problem, we can arrange there only the examination. Okay, that's fine. Secretary is all okay. And we could easily get one of the parsons from St. Mary Max to invigilate if that's okay. So uh, they have already talked on the issue that who can be, uh, who, who could be the invigilator. So uh, that can be arranged from St. Mary, one of the parsons or other priest can be the invigilator. Fine, yes. They seem to have a lot of parsons there, don't they? The two men chuckled, which means they were laughing in a suppressed manner or in a cordial manner. Good natured, and the secretary had a final thought. At, li at least there's one thing you shouldn't have much trouble keeping him incommunicado. Incommunicado means not able to communicate. Should you? The governor chuckled politely once more, retreated his thanks, and slowly cradled the phone. Okay, so the only demand was uh, I think there will be no problem in making him sit quietly. And their two and that conversation between these two gentlemen was over, and the phone was kept. And you know, yes, governor said, Ivan, Ivan the break as a prison officer's call him. Oh my god, Ivan's name has been called as a name is Ivan the break, means. He was famous in escaping from prison or jail. That's why his name has been called as Ivan's the Break. Thrice he had escaped from prison. Oh my God. His name, uh, how many times? Thrice means three times he had escaped from the prison. And that's why his name has been called as Ivan the Break, who actually is expert in escaping from jail or the prison. So three times already uh, he had done this, he had attempted. And now that's why the jail authorities are so conscious, you know. And but for the recent wave of unrest in the maximum security establishment of North, he would not, he would not, uh, he wouldn't now be gracing the governor's premises in Oxford. And the governor was going to make absolutely certain that he wouldn't, he wouldn't be disgracing them. Not that Ivan was a real burden, just a persistent nagging presence. He would be all right in Oxford, though the governor would see to that, would would see to it personally. And besides, there was just a possibility that Ivan was genuinely interested in O-level German, just a slight possibility. So as Ivan's record shows that he has broken the prison three times earlier also, that's why all the jail authorities, even the governor was not so convinced that he is having any serious interest in this O-level examination to clear this German language paper. Everybody is assuming that this will be the another way of escaping from prison. So high, high officials or high security has been arranged for Ivan. At 8.30 p.m. on Monday, 7th June, Ivan's German teacher shook him by the hand. Okay, so March they had the conversation and in June, when still from uh, September he started the class, okay, March he approached the authorities that he want to give an examination and now after March, June came. Okay, Ivan's German teacher shook by the hand in the heavily guarded recreational block just across the D-wing. So in recreational block D-wing, Ivan was kept or rather his cell was there, you can underline. Gluten gig her Ivan's pardon. So on 7th June, I think the classes are all over and uh, gluten gook means he is wishing him good luck. 
who Ivan's teacher who has been giving him tuition since last September until June he was there and as the examination was scheduled so pardon I said good luck good luck for tomorrow thanks I mean ah oh, Jack and Shan you have a cat in house chance of getting through of course but I may surprise everybody said Ivan's okay even the teacher was not sure that he, he is going to pass the examination who has actually taught him from September to June and Ivan is telling I may surprise anybody you know okay so don't take me like that at 8 30 the following morning Ivan had a visitor oh my god the next day who has a, who were the two visitors to a visitor, in fact, he tucked his grubby string vest in his equal grubby trousers and stood up from his bunk. Means he was wearing his clothes and he got up from his slipper, the area where he was actually allotted to sleep in his cell. Smiling cheerful, morning, Mr. Jackson. This is indeed an honor. Oh my God, Mr. Jackson has arrived in the cell of Ivan. He is the prison officer, as I already told you. Jackson was the senior prison officer on D Wing, and he and Ivan had already become a warm enemies. At Jackson's side stood Officer Stephen, a burly, stirred, uh, surely looking man, only recently recruited to the profession. So, on that morning, who came to the cell of Ivan where I Ivan was locked up? Two visitor and these two visitors were no new personalities already Ivan knew them uh, means even uh, rather from the senior officer called as Mr. Jackson he had they have really become warm enemies in terms of hot conversation and along with Jackson there was Stephen who has been newly appointed in this uh, profession or in this uh, jail we can call Jackson nodded curtly means rudely and how's our little Einstein this morning then? And Jackson again, sarcastic mode. Oh, Einstein, how are you? Who wasn't a mathematician, Mr. Jackson? And who is replying? Yes, Ivan is telling, he was a mathematician. I think, uh, was it you, Mr. Jackson? Ivan's face was unshaven and he wore a filthy looking red and a white bobble hat upon his head. Give me a chance, Mr. Jackson. I was just going to shave when you bust hand. Means he was like that. He was wearing really bad and dirty clothes. And his all the beards have grown up. He was really wore, wearing a very, very uh, dirty type of hat. Okay. Uh, which was red and white. A purple type of hat. We can see here in your photograph also. So... Uh, Ivan told, okay, just give me a minute. I was just about to go to shave it, you know, and uh, 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 just give me a minute. He just came in, which reminds me, Jackson turned his eyes on Stephen to make sure he take all his razors off the cell. When he finished scrapping the ugly mug of his clear, one of these days he will do us all a favor and cut his bloody throat. Oh my God, how rudely Mr. Jackson is. And Mr. Jackson is who is a senior prison officer is actually instructing whom? He is instructing Stephen. You just get it, his razor back from him. Okay, after he has done his shaving. Otherwise, this bloody man is going to cut his own throat and we all are going into great danger. So you better take off his razor from him. For a few seconds, Ivan looked thoughtfully at the man standing. Ram brought straight in front of him. A string of Second World War medals proudly paraded over his left breast pocket. Mr. Jackson, who was it you who took my nail scissor away? Ivan had always worried about his hand. And while Mr. Jackson was really giving this instruction to Mr. Stephen, that Stephen, don't forget to take the, his razor after he has done his top and all the shaving. And then Ivan just reminded have you taken my nail scissor also? And your nail file too. Okay, Mr. Jackson telling not only your nail scissor, I have taken your filer also, okay? Look for a moment, Ivan's eyes smoldered and he's full of angriness. Dangerous, but Jackson was ready for him. Others of the governor, Ivan, and like this, he was about to threaten. You look, means Ivan was about to give a threatening to whom? You know, officer only. Then what? Very kindly, very quietly, Jackson was ready with the answer. Order. 
You want to give examination? You have to follow the rules. It is the order, order of the governor events. He leaned forward and leered, his voice dropping to a harsh, contemptuous whisper. You want to complain? I mean, Jackson was like that. It's an order. You are, are about to give examination. Want to complain? Go ahead. Go ahead and complain. Ivan shrugged his shoulders lightly. The crisis was over. You have gotten half an hour to smother yourself up, Ivan, and take that bloody hat off. So Jackson is ordering. Only half an hour you're having. Just get ready. Just get your shaving done. Shaving done, everything. And you just take your hats off. This hat is something like means it shows that Jackson was taking all the precautions like he does not want to leave any things like scissor, any sharp things like knife or anything that could help Ivan to escape from this Oxford prison. That's why if there he came, Jackson came to just check his cell properly and he gave all the instruction to Stephen also and he ordered Ivan that you have to take your hat off. And now when hats were about to take it off, me ah, uh, Ivan put his right hand lovingly on the top of Filthy Wood and smiled sadly. Uh, do, do you know, Mr. Jackson, it's the only thing that's ever brought me any sort of luck in life. Kind of lucky charm, if you know what I mean, and today I thought, well, with me, examine all that. Buried somewhere in Jackson was a tiny core of compassion, and Ivan knew it. Oh my God, Ivan was very clever. He does not want to take his hat off, so he just is trying to please with his cordial voice. You know, no, he, it is my lucky charm, Mr. Jackson. I, I just don't want to take, I just don't want to take off my hat. Please let it be. And you know, this jail officer or other prison officer, Mr. Jackson was kind at his heart. So he allowed him, you know, that was his biggest mistake. Okay, so we see here, page number 74, we are coming. Just this once, then Shirley Temple, if there was one thing that Jackson generally loathed about Iman, it was his long way here. And cat shaving, okay? So actually, Iman's hair was very, very long. And that's why Jackson, it troubled Jackson a lot that he might hide something in his hair. So, okay, he finally gave Brandon permission and he said, come on, do the shaving. At 8.45 the same morning, Reverend Stuart McClary left his bachelor flat in Broad Street and stepped out briskly toward Carfax. The weatherman reported temperatures tends to be below the normal for early June and a long black overcoat and a shallow crowned clerical hat provided welcome protection from the steady drizzle which had set in half an hour earlier and which now spotted and thick lenses of his spectacles. In his right hand, he was carrying a small brown suitcase, which contained all that he would need for this morning duties, including a sealed question paper envelope, a yellow invigilation form, a special authentication card for the, from the examination board, a paper knife, a Bible. He was to speak to the Women's Guild that afternoon on the Book of Ruth and a current copy of the Church Times. So now this has been very different scenario has been shown that on June 7, how on that on the very early of this June 7, uh, how the prison officer, both the senior and junior one, kept on instructing Ivan, get yourself ready, you are having only half an hour, it means that was a day when Ivan was about to give the examination and uh, this paragraph, page number 74, we see on the second paragraph that how there has been description that the invigilator, Mr. Reverend McClary, started from his point or from his destination to, uh, to go to where? To go to uh, prison and take or rather conduct the examination. So here we see there has been description of Reverend McClary, okay, Reverend McClary, who has been appointed Reverend McClary, 
okay this reverend mcclary has been appointed by the examination board okay to uh, go to the export prison or rather action prison which is located in oxford and take the uh, or rather conduct the examination with the prisoner called as james ivan so he started from his uh, residential place and what all he uh, actually that was uh, on that june in that particular area uh, the temperatures were a bit low uh, from the normal times that's why it was a little bit of cold or coldy way we can call cold waves were blowing so the dress up we have seen that he has he is actually wearing uh, a long coat or something like that so that he can have a protection from this cold weather and this reverend mcclary who is the invigilator okay is the invigilator and he is there to conduct the examination okay so he is uh, actually carrying a uh, what is carrying mr mcclary is carrying a suitcase or rather a brown suitcase okay and what all he is having in that we can see that he is having what he is having a sealed question paper number 1 you can underline on page number 74 the second paragraph and last few lines of the second paragraph i am reading it to you so number 1 he is carrying a question paper which is sealed one number 2 a invigilation form which is of yellow color number 3 a paper knife which he will be uh, from paper knife he will be opening that envelopes okay a card from the examination board an identification card that he is reverend mcclary appointed by the uh, examination board to uh, conduct the examination and he was having the bible and uh, as after the conduction of the examination he has to speak in uh, on in the some church events in some spiritual events so and a current copy of the church times means one of the magazines of church so the 2 hour examination was scheduled to start at 9:15 am so the examination timing was 2 hours and it was about to start at 9:15 am on that day of june 7 ivan was lathering his face vigorously when stephen brought in two small square tables and set them opposite each other in the narrow space between the bunk on one side and on the other a distempered stone wall next stephen brought in two hard chairs the slightly less battered of which he placed in front of the table which stood near the cell door so ivan was just shaving he was loading with all the foam and stephen actually brought first two tables and then two chair that was the arrangement for examination Seeing this, Jackson put in a brief final appearance. Behave yourself, Larry. So tables and chairs were arranged in the cell of Ivan so that he can write his examination. One table chair for whom? For Ivan. Another table chair for Reverend Mcclary, who was an invigilator. Okay, and Jackson giving you final, final warning. Yo, yourself behave. Mind we are having a watch like that. You want to say? Ivan turned and nodded. Yes, and these. Jackson pointed to the pins up. Off. Ivan turns and nodded again. I was going to take them uh, down a way, any Mister, isn't to the chap coming to sit in. I mean, and how did you know that? Asked Jackson quietly. Well, I had to sign some forms, did I? And I couldn't help. Ivan drew the razor carefully down his left cheek and left a neat sweat in a white letter. Can you ask? Can I ask you something, Mister Jackson? Why did they have to bug me in the cell? He nodded his head vaguely to a point above the door. So in this paragraph, we see that Jackson ordered to take something out from the wall, all the pins and everything, and he actually ordered, or rather instructed Ivan to behave properly. And what was we can see that there was few questions raised by Ivan which was not answered. That I, I want to write, I want to do, I have to do like this. Jackson was not bothered, but yes, one question Ivan raised: Why you want to give me examination here in this bloody cell where I am imprisoned, huh? Mister Jackson, why did they have a bug me in the cell? He nodded at vaguely to a point above the door. Not a very neat job, conceded Jackson. 
They are not. They don't honestly think I'm going to try to. Jackson saying, oh my God, you are such ridiculous. And Ivan was telling, you people think that I'm not actually interested in examination. They were taking no chances, Ivan. Nobody in the censor would take any chance with you. Okay, so Jackson is replying, we are not going to take any chance with you, okay? You already escaped three times. We don't want to give you another chance to escape from the jail. So we are, don't want to have any chance. That's why we have taken all the precaution and that's why you will stick to this cell and write your examination in your own cell. We are, we are not going to transfer you now. another cell or another, and in special room. Hope in that transfer case, you may run away. Oh my God. Okay. Who's going to listen? Oh my God, Ivan was like that. Oh bloody hell, you nobody is going to believe me. I, I'm, I'm giving examination actually behave with me like a examinee. Okay, I, I will tell you who's going to listen in Larry. It's a governor himself, see. He don't trust you bloody inch and nor do I. I will be watching you like a hawk. Ivan so keep your nose clean, clear he would walk towards the door. So Jackson said, yes. Who's going to believe? Go and ask to governor. Who's going to believe? Nobody is going to believe you. Neither the governor nor me. Nobody is going to believe you already have escaped from jail three times. You have attempted. So this time, no chance with you. And you just keep your eyes very close. Ivan, you just don't do anything horrible because we are having a very keen eye on you. Again, Jackson warned Ivan or threatened Ivan. Now this particular line on page number 75, this particular passage, what I'm reading, kindly underline. Because here lies the suspense and thriller. Ivan nodded. He had already thought of that. And number two, Ivan nodded, yes, I know nobody's going to believe me. That I'm in serious way, I'm trying to give examination. Handkerchief was already lying ready on lying ready on the bunk, a neatly folded square of white linen. So kindly underline the statement. Handkerchief was lying on the bunk. Bunk means the bed of the or the, the area where this Ivan, the prisoner, used to sleep in his cell. And it was a white colour, neatly, neatly folded cloth uh, or handkerchief. Okay, so Ivan was all ready and this is the writer has given us a small clue to underline. Just one more thing Einstein. Yeah, what's that? Jackson has really threatened and like, uh, uh, like anything to Ivan and now he's saying, yes, one more thing. Yeah, what's that? Ivan was very humble. Good luck old son. Jackson, oh my God, after so much of threatening and warning and instruction in a, such a rude manner, He's saying good luck to Ivan. In the little lot just inside the prison main gate, the Reverend S. McClary signed his name neatly in the visitor's book and hence walked side by side with a silent prison officer across the excise yard to D Wing. Okay, where he was greeted by Jackson. The wing heavy outer door was unlocked and locked behind them, the heavy inner door, the same, and the maclery was handed into Stephen's keeping. Okay, so who has arrived? Reverend S. McClary has arrived on the door of the jail. He was signing the visitor's book, keeping, giving all the uh, information what was required by the jail. He was greeted by the officer, taken from one area to the another area, especially D-Wing, where was the cell of Ivan, the prisoner. And finally, Jackson greeted Mr. McClary. Yes, Mr. McClary, you are the one. Who is there today to take or rather conduct the examination? I am Jackson. So there was introduction. And then Jackson handed Mr. McClary to Stephen. Okay, now Stephen is going to guide you and he is going to tell you where he is and where you need to conduct the examination. So my dear children, we are stopping here on page number 75. Okay, and... Till here is a part one and we will see rest of the part here in the next part two of the um, uh, of this chapter. So you are going to do home assignment on page number 
70. Okay, your home assignment is to page number 70. Read and find out. Okay, what kind of a person was he once? You all know he was a kleptomanic, congenital kleptomanic. What were the precautions taken for a smooth conduct of examination? That you need to find it out. That how they uh, had a conversation, how a uh, invigilator was appointed, and how things will happen. All the scissors and the nail filers were taken off and extra precautions were taken for the, and it was arranged in a cell. So this way the answer could be, so here we are winding off our this module or this part, part one of chapter seven, Ivan tries an O-level examination. Sorry, Ivan tries an O-level by Colin Dexter till we meet in our next video. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.